Good morning, Waymaker Church. Welcome to Church Online. My name is Tyler. I have the privilege of serving here on staff, and I'm excited for what God has for us today. If you're watching for the first time, tuning in to our church, our lead pastor, John Dupin, is on vacation this week. He will be back next week. It's, we begin a new series today called Opening Waymaker Church. As Matt talked about a little bit earlier in service, we are moving into our new facility on July 12th. That's just in six weeks. And we are so excited to fill that, that building with your family, with your friends, with yourself, with people who believe in Jesus and people who don't know Jesus so that we might declare him as Lord. And we are so excited to do that. But before we do that, we believe that God has a journey he wants to go or he wants to take our church on uh, as we journey together. We're talking about opening up Waymaker Church. Yes, we're opening up our building on July 12th, but we have six weeks, we have six weeks before that. And in that time, what we wanna do, we wanna ask God if he will pour out more of his heart, if he'll open more of his heart for us, if he will open more of his hands, his giftings pour out onto us. As Matt said earlier, uh, today is, is the day that the church celebrates the day of Pentecost, the day that the Holy Spirit poured out on believers in the New Testament. God, would you open more of those giftings on us? God, will you open more of your home? We're gonna talk about what that looks like when he opens more of heaven here on earth. And in turn, that we as believers, we as a community of believers might open our homes up to more people, that we may invite people who don't look like us, sound like us, to experience community, to experience love that we have through Jesus. That's what we're gonna be talking about for these next six weeks, and I am so excited to do it. I've, I've missed getting to be with y'all. I miss church. For those of you who know me, you, you might be seeing me a little different because I, uh, I used to have a glorious beard pre-pandemic, it was glorious, uh, and, and now it's gone. And I know a lot of people shaved for the pandemic, for their jobs. Uh, I thought I had the, the guard on my trimmer. I didn't, and I, I wept. My, it looked like blood everywhere as my, my amber beard fell into the sink. My beard is red, I will admit that. It's got a little bit of ginger in me, it's okay. I, I, I understand, I'm made in God's image. But, and so it's gone, so I look a little different. Trust me, it's me, Tyler. I can't wait to see you. This is like two weeks coming back, so it's coming back. Hopefully be back by July 12th. But if you were wondering, uh, it, it looks a little different for a reason. Now, uh, in this series, Sam like that, Sam, I'm so happy you're here. I miss Jez. Jez, I hope you're watching. Uh, that's her husband. He's usually here with us. He's not today. Uh, as we talk about opening up uh, Waymaker Church, in this season, uh, we, we've seen a lot of people have a lot of choices, right? We all have choices in every season, but in this season, there seems to be some unique choices, right? You see people on social media, uh, maybe they're doing every home project that they can, right? They've repainted their house five times. You know, they, they've done all this stuff. Or, or, or maybe you're the person that you've, you've mastered how to cook. You're, you're deciding you want to know how to cook. Maybe you're like me and you've decided to master DoorDash, right? And that's new to you. And, and there, there's different choices, right? Am I going to watch the office through for the 12th time, you know, or am I going to read a book, Right? Am I going to uh, get caught back up in Gilmore Girls, which is a guilty pleasure of mine. I am Team Logan. Uh, or am I going to go for a walk? Am I going to get some exercise? There's people that are running 5Ks in their neighborhood. Those people are called crazy, but I'm so proud of you for what you're doing. We have choices in this season. right? Uh, we have they're, they're Businesses have choices in this season. We've seen that. Open or close. When is this business going to be opening up? How are they going to operate in this season? Are they going to be closed or are they going to maybe do takeout or are they going to be curbside delivery? Different things like that. Uh, people have choices. Organizations have choices. Our church, Waymaker Church, had a choice, right? Now, I want to clearly say Waymaker Church never closed. That was never an option for us. Because the church never closed. The church was never going to close. See, this pandemic, God is not, he's not confused by it. He doesn't, he's not surprised by it. And it hasn't changed his plans at all. But what it has given us as a church is an opportunity to decide, okay, well, once we one did, we focused a lot of time on our Sunday gatherings and they're amazing and we can't wait to get back to doing that. But, but we can't do that today. So what are we gonna do? We're going to, 
We're gonna invest more in our local community. We're gonna help those who can't afford groceries. We're gonna help those who, who are fighting to keep their, their children from, from foster care, but there's some, ex, some, some out external circumstances. So we're gonna build a roof or help some plumbing. We're gonna send resources to partners and churches around the globe who are in the midst of this pandemic where they don't have healthcare readily available to them. And so their death note, the death uh, totals are so high. We're giving them resources so they can help care for the people in their environments. We as a church have said, hey, our mission has not changed. We are still here to make a way for the new and deeper with Jesus Christ. And if we can't do that through laying hands on people and healing and, and praying for breakthrough on Sundays, we're gonna do that through, through different, different areas. And I'm so proud of our church that we've journeyed and, and we've ventured into those things. So we as a church have never been closed, but we've had the, the opportunity to choose to lean into the difficulty of this season and grow in it. Now, as individuals, we have that same choice. Now, you're not choosing if you're open or closed or doing takeout, obviously, but you're choosing, am I going to lean into the difficultness of this season or am I gonna let it pass me by? Now, we're in, uh, tomorrow's June 1st, which if I'm being honest, uh, it's crazy to me. In, in mid-March, when this, when this all started, I remember talking to my wife, and we had this thought, and we, we never thought it would go this long, but we had this thought, how sad will it be if we look back and just two months just, just went by in a blink of an eye, that we really didn't do anything, we didn't make an impact on anything. And, and as the season continues and, and prolongs, uh, it's, it's so scary how, how quickly the days have gone by, how quickly the, the weeks have gone by where I feel like, have I even left my house? Have I done things of, of importance in this season? And so we have choices of what we're gonna lean into. For me personally, my wife and I, we both work here on staff, and so we've been working at home together. Now, if you're working with your spouse, you understand that's not the easiest thing to do in this season. We don't have children, we, have, we don't have pets, it's just her and I, and I thought, because I am a romantic, that she would enjoy if I started singing Garth Brooks to her in the middle of a work day while she's doing, doing emails. Just, just serenade her, and uh, she did not enjoy that, because my wife's a very hard worker, and she's really focused, and so she did not enjoy that, but you know what? I still love her when the rain's in her face, okay? I still love her, but we, we, if I'm being serious, uh, in this season, it's shown growth moments, growth, growth points in, in our relationship. And we've chosen to have intentional conversations to say, hey, I wanna be unified with you in this season. I don't wanna just be two ships passing in the night. And so that, that's meant having, having difficult conversations. That's meant me as a husband saying, how was your day today? What was, what was difficult? What was not difficult? When I was with her the whole time, and I know I'm probably the part that was difficult but I'm gonna ask her, I'm gonna, I'm gonna seek that. And so that, that's been one area of my life that I've said, you know what, God, in this season, I wanna come out of this closer, more unified, and, and in a more intimate place with my wife because we've been given the opportunity to be home together. Now, just like we all have personal journeys, personal things God has showed us, as the church, as Waymaker Church, we believe that God has something difficult that he wants us to lean into. And we talked about it at the beginning, but, but it's this idea of asking God to open up more of heaven, to open up more of his heart for us so that we can open our hearts to others, to open more of his, his hands, more of his giftings pouring out so that we can serve others in his church. Now today, uh, we're gonna be mostly in the Sermon on the Mount. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Matthew. Uh, we're gonna be starting chapter six, but the Sermon on the Mount is Matthew five through seven. This is a really cool message that Jesus is preaching. It's a sermon that he's teaching people, and he's talking about this idea of the kingdom of God and how it's different than anything we've really ever experienced. And, and as he's teaching this through Matthew 5 uh, through, through 7, and really the, the entire New Testament, the, the Jewish people who were under Roman captivity were a bit confused. See, they were waiting for the promised Messiah. They were waiting for someone to come and, and in their mind build the kingdom of Israel to liberate them, to build the city, to go back to Jerusalem. That's what they were waiting for. So when Jesus came, not bearing a sword and armor, but a message of love and peace and of kingdom here on earth, they were a bit confused at what was happening. 
And so I understand today, if, if you, you're wrestling with this, the kingdom of God, what is that? We're gonna talk about that as we journey together on what it looks like for God to open more of himself on us when we make a church. You guys ready? I'm fired up. I got a little bit of the Holy Spirit, a little bit of Starbucks cold brew, so I'm speaking fast, but I'm excited. And you, you're the best audience I've ever had because I know you're paying attention right now. You're looking at your screen. You're not on Facebook, or maybe you just tuned in. And you're like, did I just miss something? You did, but I'm still going, okay? So we're gonna have a good time today. Let's go. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 through 34. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, verse 34 says, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. Church, our first step on this journey is to seek the kingdom of God. And when we say seek the kingdom of God, and he talks about the righteousness of God, we're gonna, we're gonna take our posture and we're gonna say, God, I'm gonna start to lift my eyes to you. I'm gonna start to, to, to turn my thoughts and my desires to think of you, your righteousness, your goodness. And I'm, I'm gonna start to focus myself on that. I'm gonna seek those things above all else. In this kingdom that exists, I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus myself on you, God, of your character and how that's gonna start to impact my life. I love that next verse, and he says, uh, you guys can just stay there with the the screen. Verse 34 says, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Can I be honest with you? I don't don't think I've ever worried about tomorrow's troubles more than in this season. My my wife and I were blessed to to purchase a home in in February, our first home, and and I remember as all this is going on, I I was like, what if this, what if we can't pay our mortgage? What's what is gonna happen? Are we gonna enter into another depression? What, like, what, what is going on? Man, how many times did I miss an opportunity to build the kingdom of God because I wasn't worried about today, but I was worried about tomorrow. And so if that's you, that's just a word for you because, because when we look around, when we look on social media, when we look on the news right now, I think we can all agree that today's got enough problems. And so if we can build the kingdom today, we don't need to worry about tomorrow. Our first step is to seek the kingdom of God. Now, for, for a lot of us, and even myself, we're, we're talking about this idea of the kingdom of God, heaven on earth, and maybe you're like, what, isn't heaven just where I go when I die? Because I know for, for most of my life, I grew up in a church, went to even a Christian school. That was my thinking, that I, I love Jesus and, and I got saved, I'm gonna live a good life. I'm be honest, I'm gonna keep my problems to myself. And I'm going to go to heaven when I die because I don't want to go to hell, right? That's kind of the mentality, I think, for a lot of us in, in Western culture, Christianity. But, but Jesus, he, he wouldn't be talking about this kingdom with so much reverence and importance if it wasn't something that we really needed to lean into. And in fact, in that same Sermon on the Mount, and just a few verses later in chapter 6, Jesus teaches them, hey, this is how you should pray, in this kingdom. This is what it looks like. And so we're gonna look at those first two lines. Matthew 6, verse nine is where we're gonna start. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. I'm gonna pause there for just a second. See, as as Jesus is teaching us, when we start our day, when we exist in this kingdom, we're gonna recognize who God is. I I don't know about you guys, I, I, I don't pray as much as I ought to. And I can tell you, most times I start to pray, I'm either asking God for something or I'm asking God to forgive me of something. And I love that Jesus is, he's correcting that. He's saying, hey, when when you first talk to God, just take a moment and recognize his holiness. Would you start your day that way? God, you are holy, you are good. God, there's a lot going on in this world. I'm not gonna worry about tomorrow. Today, I'm gonna start with recognizing the holiness, the goodness of you. And and then he goes on that very next thing. So, So the first thing he says when we pray, recognize the holiness of God, the grandeur of God. That's pretty important. So the next thing, may your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. See, this is a pretty important concept that Jesus is teaching us. And he's saying, hey, daily, ask God daily to open up more of heaven on earth. More of heaven on earth. And now I want to lean into a little bit more of this idea of the kingdom of God because it, it can be a little confusing. 
If you're familiar with scripture at all, or, or maybe you're new to Christianity, maybe it's the first thing you've ever watched about the Bible, but maybe you've heard the names Adam and Eve, the Garden of Eden, the, the first story in the Bible. Well, in this story, the garden was a, was a perfect place. It represented a place that, that, that man and God were, were in unison together. It's a place where God walked among men. It's a place where sin and death didn't exist. See, the garden is the picture of the kingdom of heaven here on earth. But sin entered the world, darkness entered the world. Man chose to not wanna just be with God, but wanted to be like God. And so these these two realms were, were completely separated, heaven and earth. Good, evil, light, darkness. And what needs to be understood at when these two have been separated, they can't exist together any longer because good can't exist with evil. It never could. So now on earth, there's a ruler. And his name is Satan. And, and he, he, he rules this earth. And in heaven, God still sits on the throne, but these two kingdoms are separated and you and I exist in this world. And in this world, there's darkness, there's sin, there's pain, there's suffering, there's evil, there's racism, there's selfishness, there's pride, there's lust, and we've been separated from God. And so the, if the story of the Bible is the story of, of what it looks like for God to restore his people back to him and what it takes to do that. In the Old Testament, we see a lot of, of animal sacrificing and, and that can get weird and a little confusing. And what they were doing was saying, there, there needs to be a price to pay for sin. And so when I kill this animal, what I'm doing is I'm creating a, a, almost a mini moment of heaven on earth because that's all this animal can provide me for the sin that exists in this world. And then they built the tabernacle and the temple of Solomon and these became places almost like an embassy of heaven on earth that you had to though be very certain people could, could walk into. You had to have a citizenship there but you had to be also paid for by blood of animals. And then you could go into a pocket of, of heaven on earth and you could actually go to the Father. So while the, the Israelites were waiting for Messiah to free them, they thought from Roman captivity, Jesus was coming to free them from an a earthly kingdom that had constricted them and had controlled and, and produced darkness and sin of this world. And so uh, Jesus is saying, hey, in my what I'm doing here, I'm bringing the kingdom of God down to earth. I am the bridge between heaven and earth. It's not just one or other, but, but the kingdom of God can be built here. So when we, we, when we seek God, when we ask him daily to open up heaven and, and we begin to create heaven around us in this world, well, then what do we do? Well, if we're asking God to open up more of his heart, more of his hands, how do we do that? How can we do that? Well, Jesus continues on in the Sermon on the Mount in chapter seven, verse seven, and he says this. Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who seeks finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Ask and you will find. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and you will, the door will be opened to you. It's who God is. But this can can be a little odd, right? Man, I really want a Ford F-150. So if you're watching, that'd be awesome. I'm just joking. But if I seek God, I ask for that, right? Was well, God gonna, he's, he says, hey, ask and you will find. Like, see, like this, is, this is what you do. See, we can't have, have, have this passage if we don't understand why we seek the kingdom of God. Because when we seek the kingdom of God, he starts to transform our mind. He starts to change how we think. We no longer think in an earthly mindset, but we begin to focus ourselves on the characteristic of God. We begin to focus ourselves on things of an eternal perspective. And so then when we start seeking God and we start asking God, we no longer asking God, can you provide this new car or whatever it is, but God, would you help bring more of heaven to earth? God, would you help open my heart? Will you show me what breaks your heart? 
God, would you pour out more gifts? We start to change our mindset of how we look at things. And so then when, when we seek, we do find because God wants to open up heaven. It's who he is. He's a way maker. He's a door opener. And he begins to do that. He opens up because when we ask, we, we're given. When we seek, we find. When we knock, it's open to us. See, as citizens of heaven, we have the right we have the right to walk into the throne room of the creator of the universe. Don't you see this goes so far past the 70 or 80 or 90 years that you're gonna live on this earth? That when we operate in the kingdom, we now have the authority, you and I, to ask something of the Father. And when we, when we set our minds on him, when we focus on the characteristics of God, he says, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna give you those things. I'm not, I'm not gonna trick you. I'm not gonna give you something you don't want, but I'm, I'm actually gonna provide you what you desire because you desire who I am. So when, when we focus and we say, God, will you open more of your heart? What we're asking for, we're saying, God, open more of my heart to what breaks your heart. Because we started to focus ourselves on God, on his character, and I think there's nothing else our world needs right now than for believers to start asking God, hey, what breaks your heart? Because it breaks God's heart to see men and women who are created in his image, who carry the imago Dei, the image of God, be killed in the street because they look different. Breaks my heart and God is, is, is breaking my heart for the thought that someone might walk down the street and I might have some fear in my heart of them because of what they look like. When I've never walked down a street and thought, this person walking by me, are they afraid of me? That breaks God's heart. God, would you pour out more of your gifts. God, would you open more of your giftings in me so that I might serve others and your church? Today's the day of Pentecost. Might get a little weird. Just joking. Maybe, I don't know. Right? But maybe you've lived in a place like, very similar to me. You, you maybe you've been afraid to ask for the, the gifts, the sign gifts, speaking in tongues, healing, prophecy, and you're watching here. I didn't know there was this kind of church. Well, well the scripture says, hey, ask for these greater gifts. But, but maybe we've left the Holy Spirit on the outside of the building and, and today you need to understand, God, would you open more of your giftings so that I might serve others? God, would you give me a word today so that when I run into someone that, that, that feels alone and, and is one step away from taking their life, that you have a message for them of love, not to make my name known, but to make your name known. God, would you open that gift in me, even though it's gonna make me feel uncomfortable, even though it's not natural because it's supernatural? God, would you, give me, would, would you give me the opportunity to pray for someone, to ask healing for something? God, would you open your gifts so I can serve others more? God, would you open more of your home so that I can open more of my home to others? God, would you build more of your kingdom here on earth so that in my house I might recognize that, that it can be a place of heaven on earth. I can bring people in who don't look like me, talk like me, who don't have the same life experience as me, or maybe they do, but they don't understand the love that Jesus Christ has for them, and they can enter into my home, and I can see them as the image bearer of God, and I can love them, and I can say, hey, it matters, you matter to me. Church, that's who we want to be. We've built an awesome building on Hooper Road. And they're starting to add the final touches and it just gets cooler and cooler and I just see God doing more and more there. But if we enter into that, that building as a people who don't care what God is doing in the world, as a people who don't care for those on the outside of, of the walls, as a people who don't want to see God shine down and fall down on us, even though it might be a little uncomfortable, but know that chains are going to be broken, that sin cycles are going to, are going to stop, that, that people are going to be healed because of the, the power of Jesus Christ and the spirit that lives inside of us. Man, why did we build this building? 
But if we walk in on July 12th as a people who have said, who have gotten on their knees and have said, God, would you break my heart for, for, for others? Will you give me giftings that, that I would never have asked for before? God, would you, would you help me love others in my home? When I make a church, that is a people that I want to stand with on July 12th and raise my hands in victory. But it's a journey. And we have the opportunity to lean into that in this season. And so we, we've looked at, we've talked about how we need to seek the kingdom. We need to seek God and who he is, his character. And, and because of this, we, we operate in this kingdom that Jesus came to create here on earth. And if you, have, if you understand the lordship of Christ... If you've placed your trust in who he is, you've believed in him. You and I now have the, the access to go to the Father. And we can look around and we can see pain and suffering and death in this world. And we can ask God to pour more of heaven out to this earth. And he will. But how do you and I just accomplish it? Well, in the, the next verse in Matthew 7, 12, Jesus says this. It's a famous verse, the golden rule, do unto others as you would like them to do to you. This is the essence of all that is taught in the law and the prophets. Jesus is saying, he's stopping, he's talked for a while, he's getting to the end of his sermon, and he's saying, hey, in case you've missed it, in case you've been focused on you, then you have no idea how this kingdom is gonna work. But this kingdom is here to set people free. And you need to understand that my love is so great for you that I died on the cross. And when you accept that, when you realize that, then something starts to change in you. This life goes from being about you to being about others. Because why would I keep that on the inside? Because I walk in freedom. Because I live in a world of sin and death, but I have the armor of God on me and the enemy can't hurt me. I know where, where, my, where my life lies and it lies in the hands of Jesus. And so my mind starts to shift and I start to make other people the priority. See, the kingdom of God begins to be built through different actions. It's built when I lay my, my, my own selfish desires down in my marriage. It's built every time I seek repentance. When, I, when I'm honest with my wife about maybe a thought I had that day or an action I did. It's built when I begin to serve others. But here's how it's not built. Here's how it's not built. The kingdom of God is not built through a pursuit of perfection, but through intimacy with the Father. And for, for decades, for centuries, the church has been focused on this idea of I got to get it together. And Jesus is saying, the, I don't tell you to, to seek perfection. I tell you to seek the Father, to humble yourself, to say, Jesus, Father, I can't do this on my own. Would you pour out more of you on me today so that I can make others, I can lift them up. I can make myself less than. I can, I can carry my cross. I can decrease and you can increase so that the kingdom of God can be built. But here's the thing, church. We can't wait for others to build this kingdom of God. We can't just think maybe my church is doing this. They're doing some cool stuff with Mosaic and what they do on Way Youth on Wednesday nights and, and I give and, 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 that's, and we're supposed to give our monies and, and I got saved at, at summer camp and I'm gonna focus on, on life and, and that's great and I'm gonna go to church but I'm not gonna be too involved and I'm definitely not gonna pray for someone because it's kind of weird and I don't know, am I gonna offend them? Like maybe that's not what God wants me to do because yeah, the devil would ever want you to pray for healing over somebody, by the way. but we wait for others to build the kingdom of God. Don't you think, church, that if you've made a decision to believe in Jesus, that the enemy he doesn't wanna hurt you? He knows he can't steal you away, but don't you think he celebrates every time you look in the mirror and you don't see the kingdom of God reflecting back in it? I 
I expect others to build the kingdom of God. My church, but not me. Mm. Another thing I've done personally that has stopped the kingdom being built is because I'm sometimes more afraid of how I'll be perceived in an earthly kingdom than the impact I can have in an eternal one. I don't wanna ruffle feathers. I don't wanna offend people. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna help some people, but I, if I say this, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna offend both people. And Jesus says, hey, they killed me. What do you think they're gonna think about you? bottom line of today as we start this series if we seek him then he will build more of heaven to us now church I'm going to be honest with you Matt Matt kind of said something earlier where he, he feels like at times that he feels a loss of words when it comes to racial tension and racism and injustice in, in our country and I, I've never I, he, he spoke so clearly and, and I, I feel that too and even in this moment man I don't have the words to say to those who are watching right now my African American brothers and sisters who feel pain or, or fear frustration or anger right now But as we're doing tomorrow, I want you to know that Waymaker Church, that Tyler, that my family, my heart breaks. God is breaking my heart because there's nothing more that this earth needs than for the kingdom of God to be built. And Jesus sent his spirit to us and it's alive and well in us in church it's, I don't think it's a coincidence that today is the day that we recognize the day of Pentecost, the day the Spirit was given to the church. For if you look on Facebook or Instagram or the news and you see cities burning, of a better example of the earth, the earthly kingdom versus the eternal kingdom. And how I'm deciding to be a part today to build the kingdom of God here on earth. And so as we wrap up, for you this week, maybe, maybe your first step is just to say, hey, I'm going to seek the kingdom of God. I'm going to seek God today. I'm going to start my day with recognizing his holiness. I'm going to recognize who he is. I don't even know how to begin, but I'm just going to say, God, teach me. Show me. I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on you, on who you are. Will you, will you lead me today to build your kingdom? Maybe you've never thought about doing that. and that Just, just do that this week. But maybe you're, you're on the other end and, and you would say, I, maybe you're a little offended. Maybe you're a little frustrated. Maybe you don't understand what this looks like or why you have to be focused on this. And, and here's what I wanna, wanna say. Very sincerely, that the kingdom of God is not filled with people who just believe in Jesus and, and don't wanna go to hell. Now, I know that I I didn't just say, yes, Jesus Christ is the sole salvation. His death on the cross, burial, and resurrection gives us salvation. But what Jesus, he says in Matthew 7, a few verses down, not everyone who's going to say my name will be entered in because it will be just in name alone. And And at Waymaker Church, we say believe in and follow Jesus for a reason because we see that Scripture teaches that that is, that is the, the life of the believer. It's not faith or works. It's faith and works. And it's people who believe in the lordship of Jesus and live it out daily. That doesn't mean you have to be perfect. It doesn't mean maybe you've even been focused uh, purposefully to not build the kingdom of God, but life gets busy, right? You leave the house and, and you're thinking about a thousand things. You just had a fight with your wife or your roommate and you gotta go to work and deal with something frustrating at work. And then you gotta, you gotta go to the grocery store. You gotta go to Target to get a card for Mother's Day or Father's Day and the rent's due and you're just focused and you get back at home and you realize I didn't, 
I didn't even focus on how I could build the kingdom of God today. What I want to say is, if you still have breath in your lungs, then, then there's opportunities that God has for you. And lastly, as I close, and, and our amazing worship band is going to lead us in worship. Maybe you've been watching today and we're talking about this kingdom of God, this lordship of Jesus, the sacrifice of Jesus, and you have never made a decision to believe in and follow Jesus. You don't even know what that means. But there's something spurring in your heart. There's something that God's pulling you to. And and, and you're having the thought and the understanding that I cannot do this life on my own. The struggles, the pain, the sin existing in this earthly kingdom, trying to do it on my own. And today I want you to realize that you don't that Jesus died for you. And I don't care if you're watching this right now live, if you're watching this on Tuesday, and you're like, it's Tuesday, and he's talking right to me, but it was, it was Sunday, I am talking to you. Because I believe right now, wherever you're at, that you can begin a relationship with Jesus. We talked about that God's a door opener, and when we knock, he opens, and he absolutely does. But I gotta tell you, it matters who's on the other side of the door, does it not? I'll be honest, if a stranger comes and starts banging on my door at 10 o'clock and I've been asleep for an hour because I'm an old man (laughs) and I don't know you, I'm probably going to talk to you through my Ring app, okay, and say, who are you? And I probably won't open the door to you. But if my brother starts banging on my door, if my friend starts banging on my door, if my father, if I'm banging on my father's door, I I know that door might be opened with some questions of why are you knocking on my door? But I know the door is gonna be opened, right? That's what Jesus does for you and I. See, we were once enemies, we were once separated from God, but that, that, that sacrifice Jesus had, it allows you to step in to being a son and daughter of God. And he opens his door every time to you. So what I want to do is I want to lead you through a prayer real quick. You can bow your head if you're in the room and and if you're by yourself or whatever. But if I'm speaking right to you, you've never made a decision to believe in and follow Jesus. I want you to to take this moment. Repeat these words after me, whether in your mind or out loud. They're, They're words to what's happening in your heart. I'm not doing anything special. I'm just helping you have a conversation with God today. Dear Father, dear God. I recognize today that you are the holy creator of this universe. And I recognize and declare today that my sin has separated myself from you and there's nothing that I can do on my own to fix that. But today, March 31st, 2020, I'm declaring you, Jesus, as Lord of my life. And I'm recognizing that you lived a perfect life and you died on the cross being the perfect sacrifice. That you were buried in the tomb and you rose again three days later. And when you did that, you swallowed darkness, you swallowed the grave, you defeated sin and death forever. And from this day on, I believe in who you are as Lord and I will follow you. I will build your kingdom. And if you just prayed that prayer today, I want you to text the word I believe to 31996. Usually we'd say raise your hand, but I can't see your hands. We text you that so we can journey with you. If you're on our church online uh, site, you can just click the raise a hand button because we wanna journey with you and celebrate the new life in Jesus that you had and the spirit falling down on you in this moment. And so you can begin to build the kingdom of God Church, I'm so excited for what God's gonna do in this season, and I don't know what he's gonna do. I'm excited for Pastor John to be back next week as we begin to look more in depth to what it looks like as we open our hearts and hands to heaven. So church, will you join me in worship in this moment?